you've obviously like I feel like you are consistently early to scenes that end up becoming big like I think you were like really the only fault one could take with Chris Dixon is that you're too early to things I mean you were dancing at the AI party when the club was empty and you left <laughs> I definitely <laughs> That, that that hits home. I definitely feel like. A, but um, but it's amazing. Yeah. You're as been, a stock. I've been, I've been. You hold like you you're always early, and you were obviously early to crypto, and 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 um, it's more than made up for it. I imagine with angel investing too. I feel like you were early to a lot of trends. Um, what's the like? How does one become early to things? How 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 should I yeah. be? You know, adjust. How should I be I living? Like, yeah, I mean, so there's no. I mean, so this it's actually I think a. Uh, uh, fairly straightforward. I wrote a blog post I called, um, I think it was what, what the smartest people do on the weekends, every, everyone else will be doing at work in 10 years or something like this. Um, and so the, so like, it wasn't like I got into machine learning. It wasn't like there weren't people into it. There were a lot of really smart people into it. Um, but they were, it was kind of a cult. Um, uh, and I, I find that's a, that's a really, um, common pattern. So what are the cults right yeah. now? Yeah. Well, I think they're all over, by the way, they're not just in technology. So like, if you go back, you know, uh, my understanding is, you know, Chicago comedy in the 1970s was the genesis of like all modern kind of, you know, Saturday Night Live, whatever, a whole bunch of, you know, uh, New York film scene in the, I think it was the 80s, maybe of like Scorsese and Bubba. Groups are much yeah, more it's these small cultish groups. They're often, I think it happens in academia. I think, um, you know, I, I'm not an expert in this area. I mean, I know something about like maybe historical examples, but like today, I bet you there are all sorts of interesting kind of, maybe they're happening on the internet now, they used to happen physically, but they're kind of cultish groups. They tend to be people who are motivated um, because of the interestingness of the problems, not because they see any kind of payout or other kinds of things. Oh, by the way, one of my favorite examples in that is um, computer graphics in the University of Utah in the 70s. Um, you go back, there was one, I forgot, there's one rich endowment, uh, you know, uh, trustee who gave this grant to do computer graphics. And it was the only place uh, only uh, one of the only universities in the country that took this seriously. Um, and, and if you go back, it's Adobe, Pixar, like just, you know, Atari, Apple, like everybody was there. It's a good right? way of and it was like 15 people and it, like the entire modern industry was built by that, right? Um, and it's just because somebody had, sorry, uh, machine learning, by the way, we can talk about that. These, you know, the fact that they're all Canadian, right? And they, they had these Canadian grants and like, it would just happen to be for whatever, yeah. Jeff Hinton is the patriarch, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, Oh, one of the patriarchs. Yeah. I mean, you think about like, why were they working on, like just going back to, to neural nets, like why were they working on neural nets right. in the right. 90s and 2000s, right? I mean, it was pretty eccentric to do it then. And it was really, the, they had this view that um, that that's how the brain works from what we know, you know, it has sort of a neural network structure and therefore this should eventually work. But that was very hard to get it, stay excited by that in, in those decades when the results just weren't good, right? Yeah. Um, like when we did Hunch, like that was just, neural nets just didn't work. Um, it, it turned out, it turned out, you just needed more GPU power and all those other things. They eventually work, but but at the time, like the results just were very poor, right? There and yet they, they they continued. Even at us for for Q in twenty thirteen, um, yeah. and this is after the famous Hinton paper, which you know uh, ultimately led to that cat situation with Google that you're talking about. Um, it was still believed. I mean, we'd sold to Apple, and we were like working on machine learning on Apple's budget, and it was still kind of believed that like. Yeah, I mean, this stuff's super dumb. Um, maybe it can do cool toy examples, but it doesn't really work. But but I love this idea of of kind of um, passion cults. Uh, uh, you know, of uh, are are the stories often of what creates future yeah. technology. Look, by the way, home, homebrew computer club, homebrew, exactly. uh, Unix, open source software, like cult. all these things were weird cultish clubs. That, that Every you... person listening to this is only wondering what are the cults right now. Yeah, I mean, so. Uh, be a pioneer. We got that out of the way. So what are the other? Um, I mean, I, I have my theories. I mean, like, I, I'm going to be wrong about a lot of it. Part of you have to be deep into an area. Like you have, like, I bet you there are some kind of interesting new databases out there that are, you know, I don't know what they're streaming database, or, you know, or no SQL. I don't know what I, I don't, I'm not a database person anymore. I don't really hang out there, but I bet you, you can pretty much take any, any area where there's a bunch of smart people working and there's some probably like um, subset that's an interesting cultish group, right? Um, I can speak a lot about the areas I, the cults I hang out in, which is, you know, crypto, you know, probably things, there's a lot of very interesting stuff happening around video games today, as an example, that I think, I think you could imagine a lot of those things. I think the video game industry probably, even though it's $150 billion and, you know, uh, you know, people I think are starting to, to grok it, I think it's probably still being significantly underestimated in terms of how profound, I think it's the most, by far the most important, uh, medium cultural medium 
and uh, still is sort of considered, I think is underestimated. Um, what else? I don't know. Like, I mean, name an area we can talk about. I, I, think the, I think the characteristic, I think, look, I don't have all the answers here, but I think the characteristics are a bunch of smart people motivated by interestingness as opposed to near-term profit, because usually these things are just too far off to see that, right? And it, and it tends, they tend to have this characteristic that the deeper you go into, I think crypto is very much like this, the deeper you go into it, the more interesting it gets. Yes. Um, there are fields where the deeper you go in, you're like, well, really, that's it? Like, <laughs> another key characteristic of the cults is that they, of the good ones, the ones that start off with toys and become a big deal, is the rate of improvement. Yes. Okay. So this is kind of Clay Christensen's core insight, I think, in Innovator's Dilemma, is there sort of his core thing is his two is this chart where it's kind of, you know, human needs stays relatively flat. Like my need for, you know, how good of a payment processor do, do I want as a human or something like that? That that demand stays relatively not constant, but it doesn't it goes up at a certain rate. And then the technology goes up at a much faster rate. Right? Those are the disruptive technologies. And so it's this simple observation that these two lines that look far apart now and make people think it's a toy, um, it, 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 th those lines will get much closer. Now, the canonical example that that you know is is the telephone versus the the uh, telegraph. So that you know back in when when Bell first came up with the telephone, Western Union, which was the incumbent, passed on the passed on buying the patents because they had a big telegraph business and they talked to their kind of enterprise customers, you know, who were like railroads and other people, and they're like, look, this thing's great, and the telephone only goes a mile and it's a toy and it's like, why would you want to hear the person's voice when I always want to send them like business info that I can do very efficiently through telegraph and they under, but of course the phone, you know, once you invest in it, like you could go more than a mile, you could go much farther and you could do all sorts of the head, the handsets got better. And just like all, all these things that the rate of improvement was so great. And so this yeah. people, people focus too much on this gap between what you want and what there is today, when you should be looking at the gap plus the, the, the rate of change. The derivative. Um, yeah. You mentioned earlier something very interesting, which is people that are very focused on it, you know, for the interestingness of it, for the purity, often they don't really know why they're focused on it, but they are. How do you think about that with crypto? Because it does feel like with crypto, there's also a very big commercial thing going on because the innovation is money innovation. Yeah. Um, uh, do, you know, does that distort? How do you see through all the fake scenes into the real ones? Yeah, can I, can I just say, say one last point on the on the other? So I, I, I wrote this um, uh, to, to this to this point. I wrote an essay a few years ago um, that was that ended up being published in the Atlantic, and it was about the history of computing and how it related to, to logic. And actually, that essay was meant to be on this top. I never actually I, the title got changed and things, but originally it was going to be called. The idea was nothing interesting is a waste of time that, that as long as you have a bunch of people that are really interested in something it ends up having these inadvertent practical results and to me one of the most fascinating examples of that is formal logic so logic there was a great quote i, I actually have it in the essay from a computer scientist that said if you hired somebody in 1905 to survey the world and find the most useless impractical subject on the planet it would be it would be these 10 people who were, uh, you know, it was Alonzo Church, Bertrand Russell, uh, Kurt Gerdell, like the, the, like these, these like ten people who thought this was an interesting topic to do this formal logic stuff, which literally ended up being the entire kind of uh, uh, Alan Turing, the entire foundation of computers, of computer science, and why after at World War II that all kind of came together and you had this explosion and became clearly the most important invention of the century, right? And it came from literally like one of the like like any smart group of people would have said it's the dumbest, biggest, most abstract waste of time, right? And so I tried to kind of trace out the the genealogy of those ideas in that essay. If people are interested, it's, it's on my blog, cdixon.org. Um, uh, it's, it's, anyway, so I, I think you could actually go farther on this um, concept. And it's not just a technology concept. I think, I think if you go and you do the kind of genealogy of ideas throughout history, I'm not I can only know a few subject matters like logic and things like thoughts and things in philosophy and computer science and things. But I think in general, this is a pattern. I think it's a pattern throughout anything. Because, 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 look, I mean, I, I think of it this way: like it's, it's about time horizons, right? Um, most things in the world operate on a, like a two to three year time horizon. Like business operates on a short time horizon, right? Public companies op operate on quarters. If they have a really um, visionary CEO, they have to they can operate on a three year cycle. Like there's very few institutions in the world that can operate on 10, 20 year cycles, right? And so, and one of those is, is sometimes like government research, things like universities. And another is, is, is hobbyists and hackers, right? The stuff they do on the weekend is because they don't have a time, they, don't, they can actually do a 10 year time horizon, right? Yeah. They're, they're playing with, anyway, so that, that's my, I feel very strongly about that, that thesis. And it's frankly, the only kind of 
thing I think like the only for me the yeah the the only kind of the the big pattern to look to look to to look at the world through that lens I guess.